Welcome back to the final part of this video. Oh god, I hope it's the final part. I just got a parcel in the post from my casters. I've just got the wolf ring back, so I'm going to show you that now. So this is what it's looking like. I'm pretty pleased with it. Obviously it is chunky, but pretty much everything I do is. It's picked up a lot of the detail, which is cool. And you can see the flowers there. They look a bit like just a lumpy mess at the moment, but when it's been patinaed and polished, it'll have a bit more definition, I'm hoping. The inside definitely needs some work. It's like looking pretty rough and scrubby, but that's okay, I can grind that down a little bit. The casting looks like it's come out pretty well. I'm hopeful about that. You can see where on one side I did manage to almost completely get rid of the seam mark and on the other side I didn't. But everything has come out in one piece, how I wanted it to, so it's very exciting. I think what I'll do first, so I actually got the sprues ground off and just because I wanted to see what that service was like. Oops, so I just realised that I haven't actually explained what a sprue is. Um, I think I'm going to do a whole other video on the casting process, but basically when you get a casting back, it usually has a little sort of metal pipe on it. I will probably explain this another time, but yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It usually comes with like a little extra bit on it that you need to take off. It does save me a few hours in um, filing off the sprue myself, because that takes me ages, but it doesn't look great, so I don't know whether I'll carry on paying for that, to be honest. But good to know. And I think what I'll do is I'll give it an initial polish first and get rid of the sort of the roughest bits that I need to get rid of um, before I patina it. And then it'll be polished again after that. But I'll take you through the whole process. So, yeah. Okay, so we have smoothed off where the sprue had been attached and then grown away. So that's where the sprue was, which fed the metal in. I've also given it like a once over polish so that it's looking pretty much how I want it. I don't know if you can tell, it's looking very shiny. I was using a combination of, I don't know what these are called, like rubberized abrasives, I think. So a couple of those in different grits and then I uh, used some polish and actually when I used the polish I saw a few more places I wanted to refine um, so then I washed it went back ground it down again and then I've used the radial wow. bristle brushes these also come in different sort of grits and this is a fairly fine one so that's why this is looking nice and shiny and I think my next thing I'm going to do now is patina it so the inside is still looking kind of messy, but much smoother and it feels much nicer now. It's more wearable feeling. But yeah, I think I'm going to patina this now in some liver of sulphur, which will darken all of the metal. So I think it oxidizes it. And then we will come back to polishing to remove the patina from all the bits we don't want. So we want a nice shiny band. We want shiny flower petal tips. We want shiny wolf head but we want all of the crevices to be in shadow. So that's hopefully what we're gonna achieve now. Okay, so I'm in my kitchen. So I have this um, solution for oxidizing. It smells like actual death and I'm pretty sure it's quite dangerous. So I also have my mask. I'm gonna have the window open. Um, I've got some plastic tweezers gonna get my marigolds out and actually do it with gloves on because I really don't want any burns. I don't think it could burn me, but I'm also gonna make it stronger than I did last time, so take the precautions, why not? So yeah, I will set you up and you can watch the process and hopefully not me getting horribly injured. So this is the result. I don't know, I think I did it on a time lapse, so you won't really see that. I only left it in there a few seconds. But yeah, this is the result. So you can see that it's oxidized. I don't know if it's picking it up on the camera, but it's interesting because it goes like all rainbow colors. 
and some people would then wear it like this but that's not really the vibe we're going for with this one so what I do next is polish all of the high points that I want to be that bright silver again and leave the areas that I want to be dark so like inside the ears I want them to be black still so we won't touch those it might take me a couple of goes to get this completely right but I'm hoping that it's gonna look good very soon so cross your fingers with how this has turned out. It's pretty close to the original brief and the sketches that I did and I'm just really pleased with the work that I've done. Uh, it's been a pretty long time but it was really nice to share the process with you even though it was a pretty long process but it was cool to be able to see all the different techniques that I used. So that was you know carving, molding, changing the molds, using different kinds of wax and things and so the final thing left to do is actually just to package it up and send it off to the client so all of my packaging is recyclable and on top of these recycled black ring boxes I just put my own wax stamp seal um, for the branding which I think is really nice. It's also very satisfying to do and to watch, it's one of my favourite parts of packaging. So because this was a custom order I have decided to put in an extra vinyl sticker. These stickers are available on my shop in a set but I'm just going to throw one in, just to be nice. And it goes in a 100% recyclable Jiffy envelope. And when I attach the postage sticker, I actually use that with a recyclable tape. Pop a little thank you note in and put it all together. And that's it, really. I'm super excited to see this on the customer and excited to see what you guys think as well. Really hope you enjoyed this video series. There's another one coming up soon and I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, do subscribe and I'll see you next time.